I got shy all of a sudden. Or they can call me by my first name, but on the first day, I, I like to tell them, it's Dr. Rogers. Well, let's get into it. Let's talk about the neuroscience of creativity then. All right. You so got skip it. Skip everything else. Let's get into that. I'm hyper creative. No, really? I, I can't stop ever. I, after this, I'll go produce a record. Then me and that gentleman are doing overdubs tonight. And then it's I'm producing a concert series and a television show. And I just, I can't stop. Mm. Mm. And it's I'd love to discuss that with you. Maybe we should. I can tell you <laughs> how it works give me a, a little bit. Analysis of it. All right. Of hyper creativity. And it uh, for your audience, it does it does concern Prince as well. Of course. So creativity involves a capacity to kind of go into your own head. There's a neural network called the default network, and if you need to be creative, if you want to be creative, you. Stop focusing on external stimuli and you go into your own head. You daydream and you mind wander. Now, for some of us, we're lucky if any idea comes because creativity can't be forced. And even the most creative folks get writer's block. But for us, us mere mortals, you think of something. When you think of something new, a brand new thought, it's filtered through a couple of little circuits here in the right hemisphere. The first one acts like a gate. So let's take myself, who I'm not a hyper creative. I'm, I'm not especially creative at all. So I'm, I'm just your average, your average thinker. But I got to think of something creative. I got to design a poster for a show. Okay. And you open up that gate. And as soon as you get your first idea that's halfway decent, you say, great, I'm going to go with that. And you automatically shut the gate. And you move it on from the art stage, where creativity is, to the craft stage, actually making the thing that you thought of. And you get busy with your craft, and there you go. And then you evaluate your poster or your song or whatever, and, and you're done with it. For a, folk, a person who is uh, hyper-creative, those gates are broken, and they stay open. So in a hyper-creative person, the ideas just keep coming and coming and coming. Now, for most of us, that gate is there to separate relevant from irrelevant information. This is what's going to work for me, this is what isn't, and I'm going to close my mind to anything that I've already decided isn't going to work for this poster or this song. But in a hyper-creative, they're open to all input. And they keep going and going and going and going and going because they have reduced inhibition. Those gates don't close. They have a leaky faucet. Um, Prince, being so facile with his leaky faucets, could think of ideas constantly throughout the day, at any phase of the day, and with his dexterity and his virtuosity on so many different instruments. Once he did transition from art to craft, he could work for hours. There was nothing stopping him. He didn't have to stop and wait for other musicians. He could play drums and keys and bass and guitar and vocals. And then the gate is open and more songs are coming. That's a hyper-creative. It's um, relatively rare. I've only known in the music business, I I've only worked with two of them. One was Prince and the other is sitting right over there in that corner to my left. <laughs> in a hyper-creative situation, my friend Tommy here, We'd be working on a gag guitar record. I'd be printing a mix, printing a mix. And Tommy would say, wait, because the ideas never stop coming. It's a, it's, it's, it's a rare um, both gift and burden. I got shy all of a sudden. <laughs>